Hi, this is Russ Anderson. One of the issues you might notice in this shot is that we've got this tall 30-story building on a bright sunny day and it isn't casting a shadow onto the rest of the environment. So that's something we want to do something about and to do that we want to create a shadow layer that we can do our final compositing with in After Effects. We're just going to do a straight 2D compositing in After Effects. So we could maybe generate the shadow from our rendering application, just Blender in this case, but here we're going to show how you can do that within Synthize. And here we're going to actually create a mesh and texture it with the shadow. And that can then be rendered to form the layer inside of After Effects. So here's our shot and the, the building is sitting up on a hill and we need to create you know a mesh object for that shadow to fall upon. So I've kind of moved away from the path of the ultralight so nothing was locked up there and I want to go to the 3D panel and have it start to cast a shadow. And this shadow is just being cast onto the ground plane, not onto this, you know, the side of the hill beneath it. So we want to get that shadow to be cast onto the hillside. So we're going to start out just lassoing up a bunch of trackers to use to do that. So I'm just going to run along and select a bunch of these. And now to convert them to the individual mesh, I just did a, you know, convert to mesh to create the vertices of the mesh. And now I am going to go and triangulate the mesh. And now you see those triangles are there. They're on the side of the mountain down beneath where the shadow goes. So now we can start looking at generating the actual shadow texture for that. And to do that I'm going to use a little script. I just selected the, the tracker mesh itself. It, it's uh, an edit mesh at the moment. Its vertices are open to, op to edit so it doesn't show up quite the same way as a selected mesh. I'm going to use the shadow map maker script which just call, calls up a little tool to do this. And so it just created the texture. And now I'm going to switch to a textured render mode here and now you're seeing just the part of the mesh that's been textured with the shadow going down on the hill beneath the building. And if you look at what's happening here, I, as I turn the render on and off the solid texturing, you see actually the shadow goes all the way to the end of the mesh as it's currently set up. And you know, that's because it's going all the way down this hill, so it extends much further than it would on, a, on the flat ground. So we actually need to make our mesh a bit bigger so that it's big enough to catch the entire shadow. So there it is again, and so it ends there. So we need to pick up a few more of the trackers. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Assemble Mesh mode, which just lets me start clicking on some of the vertices, or alternatively, on the trackers themselves and as it does that it's creating a vertex. So I'm just doing this so that I can walk around the area that it needs to go. Pick up this last one here. So that definitely is a much larger area. And now we'll just rerun the script. Oops. Need to select the mesh again. And we'll do that. So now when I switch back to the rendered textured view, you see that the shadowy part ends at the top of the building. And the top of the building is 
got, I don't know, little castle rampart sorts of things on it. So that's the right view that we see at the top. You can see those are due to the little columns on the side. So we've reached all the way to the end of the shadow. So now we have our mesh that represents the actual hillside, and we have a shadow as a texture that can be applied to it. I'll point out if we wanted to, we could go and smooth the uh, hillside out a bit more. It's kind of a, a an open question exactly how much you want to go and do that anyway, because in fact it's not exactly a perfectly smooth thing either. You've got roads and all kinds of discontinuities, trees and so on also. If you wanted to be more precise, you could go in and do some more detailed modeling, but we're not. So our next step here though is with that tracker mesh selected, we're just going to open up the texture panel. And so far, that texture is just being stored within SynthEyes. So we want to get it out where it can be used by Blender. So we're going to just say that we're creating a texture. And we're going to set the name. So we'll just store it away there. And importantly, we want to actually save it. And now we turn off that create texture so that if we, for some reason, the texture extraction stuff, and we're, we're piggybacking on Synthize's normal texture extraction capability here and, and using this shadow map creation instead. But we want to make sure that we don't go overwriting the image unnecessarily. So we turn it back so that it would be re-read. We could reload from disk if we wanted. So at this point, we've got the image out on disk, we've got the mesh model here in SynthEyes. So now we can go and do an export to Blender and start the process of, of rendering out just this mesh object. And that's what's going to form the layer that we get in After Effects that we use to be the shadow of the building. So we'll look at that in the next one. For now, we're not going to rerun through the same rendering process. It's, it's the same thing using the follow mesh process on this particular mesh and having Blender render it and then uh, converting the images that came out of Blender back to the 360 VR format. But we're just going to plow ahead to our next and hopefully final section. So thanks for watching.